Okay. <clears throat> so basically today I wanna, I want to talk about uh, a project I worked on myself, which is the synthesis of and testing of uh, new fingerprint powders developed from low cost materials. So the purpose of this uh, <clears throat> for this research is to to work to work and produce a fingerprint powder <clears throat> having a low low cost material and uh, we can have uh, like recyclable materials instead of for the material to go to waste, we could like make a use of it, recycle it to a fingerprint powder. So, uh, and this is my disclaimer as well. So the aims and objectives of the project is to develop silica-based nanoparticle powder that is usable on all surfaces. Um, we all know nowadays uh, everything is going towards to the nanoparticle research, and I tried to include uh, nanoparticles uh, into my fingerprint powder. Uh, also, to develop low cost fingerprint powder <clears throat> from re reusable battery waste, which I'm going to talk about, uh, to develop magnetized carbon based powder for latent print detection. Okay, so first of all, I will start the, with the introduction. As I'm, I think everyone knows that uh, three main types of uh, fingerprint can, can, be, uh, can be seen or not seen, just three types of fingerprint. So we have the patent, which is a visible fingerprint, a latent fing fingerprint, which is invisible, and you have the plastic, which is an impression, I would say more like, uh, a 3D impression. Uh, we have three main types of, of friction ridge patterns. Uh, loops, we will have two kinds of loops, and you have wall, you have four, four kinds of walls, and you have arches, two kinds of arches. And the loops are like 65% in the population. Walls are like, which would say 35%, arches would be 5%. Which is the, the rarest, which is which are artists, arches. Uh, methods of detection, we, we can use light, powders, chemicals. Uh, <clears throat> Silica-based powders are highly desirable because they are, they are in a high thermal <clears throat> stability of silica particle, strong interaction to body secretion, to the oil, to anything which comes of the fingerprint of the print, yeah. <clears throat> so the methodology of the three, so three main powders were made in my project. <clears throat> so first one was uh, basic silica white powder. Uh, I know white powder is not the best thing to be used in fingerprints because it will have a reverse in the friction rich skin. So, so the, the friction rich skins will be in, in in white, and the four hours are gonna be in black. We want them the other way around if we're doing fingerprint, just to make it clear. Uh, so the method we used here was Tober method. Um, and as you can see in the, in the PowerPoint, it was uh, the, the, the protocol we used was the Tober method one. <clears throat> then uh, using the magnetized ca carbon black was just a novel, novel methods which, which I tried to come up with. I tried like uh, doing more than one uh, experiment. <clears throat> also the magnetized powder was uh, a novel method which I came up with. Characterization techniques I used <clears throat> mainly R5, uh, XRD, X-ray diffraction, SEM scanning electron microscope, EDAX, FTIR, <clears throat> master sizer for particle size and VET surface area. <clears throat> so each of these characterization technique uh, will give you like different kind of, of readings of what you need to know about your sample. So the results, <clears throat> I will start with the, uh, the basic silica powder. As you can see in the FTIR results, there are four main peaks. 
uh, it's showing the stretches at uh, 458, <coughs> 308, 951. And so mainly it's showing me the, that there is a silica, a silica uh, oxide bonding, asymmetrical vibration. Uh, as you can see also on the SEM edax, uh, <coughs> the spherical nanoparticles are at the size of 400 nanometers, um, which is very small. Not everyone can see it, uh, except if you're using like uh, a powerful microscope like SEM. Um, <coughs> the XRD, it shows like, like uh, the XRD result shows that it's amorphous silicon nanoparticles. Uh, Master Sizer confirms that the particle size is uh, 622 nanometer. And also, it's not very, very accurate because there were some aggregations. The ET surface area shows that uh, the material I used was not porous. So going now to the fingerprints and how it was developed, as you can see, <clears throat> this is the patch one. So this is the fingerprint. So I tried comparing it to a commercial fingerprint powder. Ah, sorry about this. Yeah. So I tried comparing the fingerprint powder to a commercial one, the one which I made on different surfaces, uh, aluminum foil, glass, and the cardboard. So going to the <coughs> magnetic carbon black. So basically this is just a ca carbon ash. You can buy a box for like 20, 20 pounds, something. It's a very cheap uh, thing to get. Then you get a lot of it. So I tried to uh, uh, magnetize it, but the problem is <coughs> when, I, when I put it on the characterization, uh, techniques I used and FTIR it did not even give me any clear uh, peaks. SEM, it was showing so much aggregations and I could not even go more than 10 micrometers. Uh, XRD it only showed one sharp peak as, and it would bring me more amorphous product. Uh, particle size uh, shows high uh, particle size of 225 micrometers. And here, here was my uh, test. As you all know, it's a magnetic powder, which is, is like I have to use a magnetic wand for it to, to, to be applied on the powder. <clears throat> so the magnetized uh, battery waste as well, I tried, still did not even give me any results on the FTIR. I see them also it went up to 10 mic micrometers. After that, just uh, could not give me any result. XRD, no peaks were showing. Highly amorphous, much aggregations. Uh, master sizer gave me a size of uh, 17 micrometers. I would say it's, it's a big size for a fingerprint powder. Um, anything would, I would say below 10 micrometers would be good. But as I, as I said earlier, <laughs> it was just an experiment I was doing. Um, uh, particle size that shows high particles, as I said, still 70 micrometers. So it was not the best, but we can see the results. It, it gave me really good results as how the battery waste uh, chemical uh, stick to the fingerprint sweat in a really nice way. So that's what made me move forward and try it more. I, I also did some other sample like basic silica with suspension and iron, trying to make the silica uh, magnetized powder. And I even used uh, organic dyes, 
um, I used uh, carbon black, trying to mix it with silica to change the formation of the silica bonding to try and uh, let it become a different color. I was not successful doing these, almost all, all of the other samples. Uh, only material seven was, was giving me some promising results, as you can see in the picture. Uh, so <clears throat> the future work and conclusion of my work was uh, is to make three fingerprint powder from different materials uh, with a low cost, of course. Uh, so the, the basic silica uh, white powder showed a high quality performance uh, uh, comparing to the other uh, powders I tried to make. Um, <clears throat> so many future work I'm trying to do in the future uh, to create a fingerprint powder uh, which can have a catalyst telling me uh, what kind of, uh, like for example, what is the gender of the fingerprint holder? Is he smoke? Is he on drugs? Stuff like this. So that's the future now where we're trying to head now, nowadays. So you can know almost everything about someone from a fingerprint powder. So I started my project really basic and hopefully in the next few years, uh, I will try and come up with a better project and hopefully with uh, a better fingerprint powder. Thank you for listening.